Hi, so in this video we're going to continue talking about RAS. RAS is a G protein. It binds either GTP or GDP and that binding is going to determine whether or not a cell thinks it should go through the cell cycle. Well, cells don't really think, but the signal that they get from RAS when it's bound to GTP, that is a very much pro-growth signal telling cells to go through the cell cycle, and many cancer cells are stuck in that position of RAS bound to GTP. But we really have to talk about what controls RAS and whether it's bound to GTP or GDP. So we're gonna spend at least two videos talking about how RAS is regulated in normal human cells. So uh, here is a drawing of RAS tethered to the plasma membrane by that lipid that is conjugated to it covalently. So there's the plasma membrane. Now RAS uh, can be bound with GDP and it can get converted to RAS GTP when a signal tells the cell it's time to go through the cell cycle. So the question is how? How does RAS go from uh, having a GDP diphosphate to having a, a GTP triphosphate? Now, one theory, which is not a bad theory, is, well, diphosphate means two phosphates, triphosphate means three phosphates, Let's just add a phosphate to that uh, GDP, right? And that would make it T GTP. So, is that how the RAS is, is converted? You just add a phosphate to the GDP? It would make sense, but it's absolutely not how it works. So it's not about an addition of a phosphate. It might uh, seem like that would make sense. That is not what happens here. What happens instead is that GDP molecule is removed and exchanged for a completely different nucleotide, a GTP. So instead of adding just a phosphate, the whole GDP comes out and a new GTP goes in. This is called exchanging, right? It's a, called guanine exchange. So when you remove the GDP and add the GTP, you're exchanging one for the other. So this process is known as guanine nucleotide exchange. And it is facilitated by a protein called a guanine nucleotide exchange factor. Uh, we commonly refer to that as a GEF. There are many proteins in human cells that can act as a GEF, so they will swap out GDP for GTP. They are an exchange factor. And we're going to introduce one here, a protein called SOS. SOS is a human protein. Uh, what does SOS stand for? It doesn't really matter. Uh, you could look it up if you want, but we're just going to talk about SOS. Its function, its activity is a GEF. It is a guanine nucleotide exchange factor. And we'll see how it's regulated on the next slide. But its function is to swap GDP, uh, remove it from RAS, and put GTP there. So it is an exchange factor. So now we have uh, RAS, and now we have SOS, which regulates RAS. Well, what regulates SOS? Well, well let's see. So here is a cell that is in G1. RAS is bound to GDP. And let's add a couple things in here. So let's add a receptor tyrosine kinase. This could be the EGF receptor or the PDGF receptor or the FGF receptor, some receptor tyrosine kinase. Now we know the tyrosines in there are not phosphorylated because the cell is in G1. Uh, let's add some other proteins. Let's add SOS. There it is in the cytosol. And we're going to uh, see that it's bound to GRAB2. So what's GRAB2? We actually introduced GRAB2 in an earlier video. GRAB2 is a protein that has an SH2 domain on it. So SH2 domains are these domains of proteins that can bind phosphorylated tyrosines. They don't bind every phosphorylated tyrosines, but they can bind phosphorylated tyrosines that also have certain amino acids around that phosphorylated tyrosine that fit into the binding pocket of this protein's SH2 domain. So GRAB2 is an SH2 domain containing protein and it is bound with SOS. So SOS and GRAB2, those are two different proteins. They are bound together. They have very high affinity for one another. We're not going to talk about why, but typically you find them bound together. So we're going to, so SOS, we introduced in the last slide, is a guanine nucleoside exchange factor. GRAB2, well, is it, what, are we, what is it? Well, we could refer to it as a bridge protein or an adapter protein, because that's going to, we're going to see, bridge the gap between uh, the receptor and RAS. 
So here's a cell. It's in G1. Those tyrosines in the tails of receptor tyrosine kinase is not phosphorylated. Um, and so GRAB2 and SOS are in the cytosol. And you'll notice they're not anywhere near the plasma membrane. The cell is a very big place. The cytosol is a very big place. And so SOS, which is supposed to exchange GDP, it's nowhere near RAS. So it's not going to do much. Now let's say the cell gets a signal to grow. It's being um, exposed to growth factors, for example, that are causing dimerization and transphosphorylation of the tyrosines in the tails of the cytoplasmic domains of the receptor tyrosine kinases. And so what happens when you have phosphorylated tyrosines? Well, proteins can bind those phosphorylated tyrosines. Proteins that have SH2 domains, such as GRAB2. So here's GRAB2 binding uh, phosphorylated tyrosines in the tails of receptor tyrosine kinases. Now, what does GRAB2 bind as well? GRAB2 binds on, its, on another side, SOS. So now notice where SOS is. SOS is now near the plasma membrane. It is localized very close to its, well, you wouldn't say its substrate, because SOS is not an enzyme. It doesn't enzymatically act on RAS, but it acts upon RAS uh, as an exchange factor. So it's brought near the protein that it acts upon. And so now that it is near RAS, what can it do? It can take out that GDP, put in a GTP, and now RAS is bound to GTP. And we'll see in a later video how that stimulates pro-growth signals into the cell. But what I want you to get out here is understanding that receptor tyrosine kinases or other proteins that become phosphorylated on their tyrosines can transmit a signal to RAS via SH2 domaining con containing proteins like GRAB2, which bind SOS, which act upon RAS. So now we're seeing this connection between receptors and RAS. Um, I will add in here another protein. Um, I'm not even gonna give this protein a name other than calling it another bridge or another adapter protein. So GRAB2, I said, could bind directly to receptor tyrosine kinases, to their phosphorylated tyrosines, or they can bind an intermediary or in a bridge or adapter protein. So GRAB2 can actually bind phosphorylated tyrosines of other proteins, and those proteins could have SH2 domains that then bind um, phosphorylated tyrosines on receptors. So GRAB2 can bind directly or indirectly to receptor tyrosine kinases. Either way, what is the result of this? The result is bringing SOS up to the plasma membrane near RAS GDP and uh, exchanging GDP for GTP. And when RAS is bound to GTP, that is going to be the pro-growth version of RAS that's going to tell the cells to go through the cell cycle. So we're gonna cover in a later video um, how RAS is converted back into containing GDP, you gotta reset RAS. And we'll also talk about uh, what happens in human cancer cells when there are mutations in pathways that control RAS or mutations in RAS themselves. But again, for the, just for this video, we're introducing SOS and its function and how it is regulated, which is it's regulated by GRAB2 bringing it up to the plasma membrane when there are phosphorylated tyrosines that GRAB2 can interact with. Have a great day.